Well, today we're going to try and make our own vacuum chamber out of a out of a ball cur jar, or canning jar, whatever you want to call it. And I've bought some extra lids and I got the ring here. We're going to try to drill a hole in here and then we're going to try and, and solder this brass T into this uh, sheet metal steel lid. I'm going to try and make this vacuum chamber for an upcoming video. So I figured why not make a video about making the vacuum chamber. This is a good DIY vacuum chamber project. I've got uh, uh, silver bearing acid core solder. I don't know, I've never used this before. I don't have a whole lot of faith in it, but we're gonna, we're gonna give it a try. Plus, I'm not sure how these coatings, these, this plating and painting or whatever on this, on this sheet metal lid, I'm not sure how that's all gonna work out with, you know, torching and heating. But we're gonna give it a try. I got some extra lids and, uh, we're going to give it a go. So I, I figure first things first is uh, we're going to try and locate center here or good enough center. I don't know, somewhere in there, if you can see that. I'll just give it a little starting hole. And then I'll take the drill here. I've already got this bit is fairly close to this size. And, and uh, I, I want to try and get this to somewhat thread into the sheet metal so it has somewhat of a, of a mechanical... Uh, connection instead of just relying 100% on the solder, but we'll see. We'll give it a try here and see what we can do. I'm going to try and poke this hole without cutting my fingers off. Oh, that wasn't so bad. Get those shavings out of there. And uh, we'll try. Uh, it's not quite big enough, so I got I got this deburring tool. I think I can just run that around there and Make the hole a little bit bigger. Give it a shot here. Uh, it's getting there. Let's see. Let's see what we got now. Uh, I think uh, it just threads in. It might just be a tad large, but it fits. So, next thing I got to do is prepare this for solder. So I've got. Uh, I've got a couple little wire brushes here for my drill. I think we'll just give this little one a try first. And uh, we'll see if we can't scratch off some of that plating and get down to bare, get down to bare metal here. pretty good on that side. Clean this side off a little bit and we can maybe get some solder to flow through on both sides. Alright. That doesn't look too bad. Alright. Now, I've got a little bit of muriatic acid here. I can't find any acid brushes anywhere, but uh, many, many, many moons ago, probably close to 30 years ago, I did some, some architectural sheet metal soldering. And I know that sheet metal prep for solder, uh, they used to use muriatic acid. So I got a little bit of muriatic acid here and we're gonna just get that on the, on the metal surface, both sides so the solder can flow, that. And then, wherever my fitting is, I'm going to get that good and cleaned up. All right. So, let's see if we can get that, without getting muriatic acid all over me, see if we can get that threaded back in there slightly. Yep. And then, uh, I think I'm going to use this ring, actually. For spacing that up off the sheet metal, I'm going to get rid of the acid here. Now, I would like to say I chose this fitting right here. I've got I've got a box of miscellaneous air conditioning type fittings, and I mainly do automotive air conditioning. But I've done you know regular residential, household, and commercial air conditioning also. And this style of fitting is just a quarter inch flare. 
and that'll hook on to my R12 or R22 gauges and my vacuum pump, no problem. Now, I'm going to try and do this without getting too much heat into that sheet metal and warp it. We're going to see, you're, you're watching, I haven't done this yet. This is the first time trying it right on video, so we'll see how it goes. I'm going to try and concentrate most of the heat onto the brass because that sheet metal is not going to take much heat at all and it'll be warped. And it might ruin that rubber sealing ring around the inside there. So we'll see. Let's give it a try. Okay, we're on to plan B here, which is basically the same plan, but I'm going to be a little more careful where I aim the heat. I want to aim the heat just at the top of this brass fitting, and hopefully that'll wick down, down the fitting and just enough into the sheet metal to get the solder to flow. So we're going to give it a try, but, uh, you know, I haven't done soldering like this for a long, long time, so I'm not the best at it, but... Let's give it a shot here. Looking good so far. Let's see if we can get some flow over here. Oh yeah, now that looks much better. Now if only the rubber on the bottom side didn't burn. I'm gonna quick put this under some water. Be right back. Okay, I'm back from the faucet there. It doesn't look bad at all. I didn't get much solder through this backside. I was hoping for more, but uh, it's soldered all the way around on the front side here. Man, I, and it didn't burn any of the rubber. I'd call that a success. I'm, I'm happy with that. Now, if I, I don't think I hurt my quarter-inch flare too bad, but if I did, I, I can clean that with some emery cloth. Plus, my AC gauges have little rubber gaskets that seat against that tapered seat, so it should be fine. And, uh, boy, that's good and sturdy. I'm happy. I'm surprised. I, I, I'll be honest with you. I didn't know that uh, I was going to be able to do that without melting this this red rubber around the side here. So that's pretty cool. Now I can put my vacuum hose on either one of these. And if I look in my box of stuff here, uh, there's one right there. I got, I got uh, this quarter inch cap that I can screw on either one of them. And it's got a little, if you can see in there, it's got a little uh, black rubber sealing washer also. And I have ones that are without the washer. So I got both kinds. And I can put my vacuum gauge or, uh, my vacuum pump on one of them with through my my gauge set. Plus, I also have a digital micron vacuum gauge that I could tap in here to measure micron vacuum. So get a real accurate reading that way. So yeah, all right. Well, that's pretty cool. So there you have it. Perfect. That should make a perfect seal on the. Whoa! That should make a perfect seal on this canning jar. And. Uh, We'll see how much vacuum one of these can, can handle. Uh, now, a word of caution. I've never used one of these as a vacuum chamber, so I don't know how much vacuum they can handle without just totally imploding. But uh, if you're going to do this, you know, if you're watching this at home and you're going to do this same type of thing, just be careful if you put it under a real deep vacuum that this thing doesn't implode on itself. Yeah, I'm pretty I mean, I don't need this to be a super strong mechanical joint, which it feels like it is. I just need it to be airtight, and I believe it is that also. Anyway, pretty happy with the results. Uh, be sure you look for the next video. I'm going to do a video on the reason why we vacuum AC systems before we charge them. So it'll be a, a kind of a nice little interesting science project. Be, be sure you check out that next video. Anyway, if you like this video, give me a thumbs up. If you didn't like this video, give me a thumbs down and tell me why down in the comments. And 
and actually give me a comment either way and it helps the guy out so uh and oh and also be sure to click that subscribe button all right thanks for watching